Live your life within the moment, moment. And don't go wait until the morning, morning. You never know when it is over, over. All that I know is we'll get older, older. So let us dance this night away. But it doesn't matter Cut off short. Good evening and welcome to Be More Super Live with myself, Brian, and my co host, Dan. Dan, how the hell are you, my man? Listen, if I start yawning this evening, it's because Sheffield Wednesday got a very good result yesterday evening and he only went out for one and it turned into about eight. So today I've been a little dusty and uh, it might spread. You know, I'm in, I'm in an age now where hangovers take a couple of days to get over like they require more recovery than minor <laughs> surgery i think i think when we get to a certain age i think that going out drinking is a thing of the past i like a, a, a nice glass uh, glass of wine every now and again oh you're uh, so but, fancy it's well so you fancy. know it takes me a while to warm up to things do you know what i mean <laughs> but we're here this week uh we're just waiting for the guests to uh come into the live stream uh it's devony pin who is a horror queen She's been in over 80 movies, uh, horror movies, uh, produced, I think, over 15 features. And now she's been behind the camera um, as well as producing The Black Mass, which I've got to say is an awesome film. It really, mm. really is. Uh, we're going to talk about it more uh, with Devony when she comes on to the show. We're just waiting for her to join us. So if you're watching this, Dev and Devony, please log in uh, with the link provided, <laughs> or it's just going to be me and Dan talking to each other about nonsense. Uh, but We're really good say, at that. We're really good at that. We did it last week for about 30 minutes, didn't we? We absolutely vamped we did. a treat, didn't we? I've been, uh, yep. I finally finished uh, Alcatraz, <laughs> finally finished that. Really good annoyed man. that got cancelled because like, you know, like I say, like I said, it, it kind of, it, it was shot like a, like a soap opera in 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 places, but it it just seemed to, I don't know. I I, 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 I kind of want to see how the how these story arcs pan out, but it, it left it on quite a cliffhanger, and I'm very upset about the whole thing now. <laughs> but you know what? It's it's a horror themed um, stream uh, for this live live stream. Um, so I, I I mean, from you, Dan, what is your yep. favourite go to horror movie? Um, late at night. I mean, what sort of horror movies are you into? 
I, I, right, horror genre does the, it was something that never really appealed to me. I know it's got its own kind of cult following, mm-hmm. and you kind of have to be in that world to do it. You know, our good mate Dan, she's she's right into the the horror genre, mm-hmm. right? But the, I there was a period in my early twenties where I got right into teenage slasher flicks. I I, I don't know why. I just uh, like the you, you know the early Scream, the first three Scream movies. You know, Cherry Falls. I know what you did last summer. All those type of ones. Urban from the, legends. From the, to, yeah. Final urban legends. Urban legends. Yeah. Final Destination, right? That, that, the first time you see Final Destination, you're like, I can't, I, you know, there's bits where you can't look at the look at the screen, right? And then the second one with the logs. How many times do you see people post a picture of them driving behind logs, going, "This has got Final Destination written all over it," that type of thing? So I was kind of into all them. What about you? Do you have do you have like a a go to <clears throat> horror genre, as it were? Do you know what? The type of horror movies I like... Sorry, I'm typing here why, why, why we're talking. Um, the the favourite horror movies I, I, I like are like this sort of... Um, the Exorcist. You know, mm-hmm. any possession sort of style. Oh, really? Movie. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. Anything to do with uh, heaven and hell, priests, you know, it's probably from my Catholic upbringing. I don't know. <laughs> it's traumatized me. Um but but yeah, I mean I mean I, I mean they don't make them like that anymore, but I think horror has changed, the genre has changed. I think Very it's become so. a lot more difficult for these filmmakers to make things scarier because you know, back back then we 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 weren't flooded with what we are flooded with now in social media. Uh, in, in 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 content. I mean, you look at The Exorcist. People are running out of the cinema, you know, being sick, um, thinking they they've been affected. You wouldn't get that now. Literally, you'd get nah. 12, 12 year olds going into the cinema, uh, watching The Exorcist, coming out, going, "Yeah, that's all right." Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I I also feel that there's a change as well when with the change of um, CG coming in. And you lost a lot of practical effects because in the 70s, 80s, 90s, there was a lot of practical effects that were absolutely gory as sin. And you were like, good Lord, that's 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 gruesome. And, and then you saw that kind of stretch its way into shows like Game of Thrones and Walking yeah. Dead, for example, where they made a lot of practical effects. And it kind of hits a lot harder. But when you see some terrible CGI, like, for example, The Cabin in the Woods, and you're kind of like, oh, you've kind of ruined that. It, it takes you out of it. You become very aware that you're watching a movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, everyone watching right now, if you want to comment with your with your favourite go-to um, horror movie and why. So if you want to comment now and we can bring it on onto screen and we can talk about some of these selections because we've all got our favourites. Um, yeah. You know, um, I mean, The Exorcist, I absolutely love, as I said. I've actually been to where they filmed it you know, outside the house. It's on Pros- Pro- Prospect a Avenue. Nerd, you? Uh, right. and, and the funny thing is, across the road is where they filmed St. Elmo's Fire, you know, like the rest, oh. the rest restaurant. So so we've got Julia with the haunting. Uh, I presume that's the one with Liam Neeson um, uh, film, um, which um, is actually all right. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I quite like that. And then uh, mm-hmm. we've got Molly with It's... It, I've got to say, is the thing that made me afraid of clowns. Full, full it, stop. The, the one with Tim Curry fucked me up. Yeah. Right? Like, absolutely scared me to death. I, I found, like, that when they when they relaunched it in, what, 2017, it just didn't have the same magic. Like, it didn't have the well, same no. thing. I think. I mean, it was know, all right. It was it was good in bits. You know, the bit where he's, you know, he's in the great and all that. But he just kind of lost it. And then when Tim Curry turned into a spider in the second one, you kind of lost it a little bit. Went, what the bloody hell is this? But, you know... I the Tim Curry one to me seemed real, like it could happen. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Tim Curry, nothing's ever going to get taken away from that guy. He is just like literally a master of everything he does. But I think is it is it Bill Skarsgård? I think yeah. was the one that did it just recently. Um, for me, I thought he did a fantastic job. I think. Oh, he did. He did. But again, you're going to compare it with Tim Curry. Um, but again, any Stephen King. But then again, you talk about Stephen King, and obviously, I think is it Salem's Lot that it's oh. been made, it's been made, but it's been shelved. So like, the it? Stu- yeah, it's been shelved. So no one's ever going to see it. So it's been made, but no one's ever going to see it. So 
this is again a trend that all the studios are doing in the way of I don't know saving taxes or or, or what I mean I don't I it just does don't make you it. wonder if if this has been going on for years and because of the advent of social media and more information comes out are we just finding out that this is a thing that Hollywood does where they make these movies in order to keep the rights and swerve the tax and all and all and all, and all the rest of it I wonder if it's something that, that that they do just look in there Julia you've just written on there that um, you don't like clowns I remember the first time I was about eight years old when I first watched Poltergeist and. That, right, this is going to sound weird. I think I've mentioned it on this show before. Now, Brian, do you remember going to the pub with your mum and dad? Back, mm. in, back in the 90s when families went to the pub, there was always a big tree with a, uh, a swing hanging from the branch. And uh, after seeing Poltergeist, you couldn't get me near one of those bloody things because it had the face on it and everything. I'm like, this, this, sli- this swing and slide set is going to eat me for breakfast. But that clown scene where he's getting attacked by the, um, the clown teddy bear the you know the plush thing in the in the bedroom mate can't look at them can't look at them anything that looks like that can't look at them which is why when we did that special on fall of the house of usher and mm. that uh jester keeps coming out <laughs> Fuck me up. well we're talking about fears so i'm extremely scared of clowns because of it right. and i did a special event when we were redcoats at butlins um they sent us to Sandown Racers for the, I think it was the Royal Variety Club. And mm-hmm. uh, they they put me in the wrong place. They put me in the tent with all the celebrities. So I met all the cast of EastEnders and Bob Olness and that 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 Chinese guy from Pink Panther. You know you know what I mean? I was in there living at large. Uh, quack. But, but they had some clowns there. They had some old men dressed up as clowns. Well, halfway through the day, it was a hot day. I looked around and these clowns... I sat down and one guy had, had fallen asleep and put his hand on his face. So as he lifted it, literally all his makeup was smudged and it was literally <laughs> like it. I absolutely like the joked Joker. myself and I, I, I kept as as far as far away. Um so um but yeah, it's it's just crazy. It really, really is. But um but what yeah, about modern I mean, ones? Have you have you seen any modern horror movies that you've thought shit that was good um because there's different types of, of horror is it you've got psychological thrillers you've yeah. got stuff that deals with the occult you've got slasher flicks you know you've got true crime stuff like that if that kind of falls into it like what was that with jennifer lawrence the house on the left where or, you know the house at the end of the street or something it was called and there's literally one other character in this entire movie and you kind of sat there going oh well it's him then you know what I mean? Like, there's only three actors in the entire film, and and one of them is a mum. And you go, oh, it's that, it's that kid. Then is it sound? <laughs> like, <laughs> You're playing what, that what about, guess game. Yeah. What about what about modern modern horror movies? Have you seen any of late where you like shit? That was that was good. I mean, I mean, like what what modern? Let's have a look. Let me have a look at like modern modern horror movies, like uh, the Saw franchise, for example. Is that <clears throat> class of you know horror? Do you know what? I haven't seen any of the Saw movies except for the last one. What? The one before with the geezer's fingernails in the thing like, <laughs> absolutely made me wince. And then they hang in a man by his tongue or something like that. They get, you know, it's like, it's like Final Destination where it's less about the psychological drama of it all more than just absolute gore fest by the end of it. You know what I mean? Like, like Final Destination went from going, oh, shit, that no. That really could happen to. Let's see how we can kill these geezers. Like, you know what I mean? Would well, you know what? Final Destination was the first movie I saw in 3D at the cinema. And you had to wear the paper 3D glasses. You know, the ones that one lens were blue and one lens was red, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But in the news today, uh, Final Destination 6 has just started filming. There's so, five already. I think I yeah. topped out at three. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, but Saw, literally, I saw it. I think it's Saw X, so Saw 10, I presume. Right. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. But then now, going backwards, I think it's going to ruin it for, for, for me. Because yeah, I sort of... Yeah. Yeah. But I'm having, I'm having a look now. Horror movies uh, 2023. So let's have a look at what was out last year. Uh, Cobweb, that was a good film. Um, a bit creepy. Um do you know what actually what's the film with emily blunt um quiet place uh, quiet place yeah 
Yeah, really good. Would, would you I, that, that, that genuinely horror? shocked me. Yeah, I, well, I, I, you know, it scared the shit out of me, if I'm honest, because, you, you know, the, the first one, when the I didn't really know what it was, right? I didn't yeah. really understand. What, you know, I thought, oh, it's just deep people. And then the opening 10 minutes of the first one, where the young boy gets gets taken by these these things, you're like, Christ, what what film is this? This is insane. And then there's there's moments where the um, you know, where the I, I don't know what they're called, the monsters, where they're walking down the stairs and she stands on a nail and she can't, and then the baby's screaming and you're absolutely on the edge of your seat. That's a horror film, right? Surely, because it scared the shit out mm. of me. Well, the new one, the new one, which is a prequel that's come mm. com, coming out. I think it got written by our fa- favorite actor, uh, John Krasinski, who's yep. Emily Blunt's husband. Um, mm-hmm. That is showing you how it happened at the beginning, like sort of, sort, mm-hmm. sort of the me- me- meteorites hitting, um, and then obviously, um, you know what happened with the monsters. That looks more horror. I mean, again with the Quiet Place. I mean, that Sandra Bullock film. Is it? Bird Box. Is yeah, Bird, Bird Box. Box. That was mm. just missed something, didn't it? Just it just missed something because yeah. I didn't really understand what she was doing the entire movie. And then when she gets there, she's like, oh, it's all right. Well, you know what I mean? It was kind of actually a really good film. Um, I think it's on Disney Plus at the moment. So anyone watching, it's called No One Will Save You. Uh, okay. Tell me about it, tell me about that. It's basically there's no dialogue in the whole movie, believe it or not. And it's about a young girl in, in this house and an alien comes. That's all I'm going to say. And it's the <laughs> most... No, honestly, honestly. Yeah. You, sh- me, you, you me... should write treatment for Hollywood. You should... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what? It says here, Bryn, a bit like Brian, but with two ends. Bryn finds mm-hmm. solace within the walls of the home where she grew up until she's awakened one night by strange noises from unearthly earthly intruders. Well, well, you've sold it. You've sold me, Brian. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Also, but, you know, it, it... but that is, uh, no one will save you. And honestly, it is such a good watch. I forgot is about it? that. Yeah. Do you know what? Even my wife loved it. And I'll always, I, I think my wife should work for these, these, you know review pages because literally she doesn't hold back do you know what i mean right. if if she thinks that something's shit she will say it do you know what i mean she, yeah, yeah. she'll go nah and it's great but when she likes a film i'm really stunned i'm like i just want to shout from the roofs i want to literally feature it as much as i can um but yeah so um i've just had a message that um from from her unfortunately she can't make it ah, so gutter. everyone watching um she cannot make the live stream so i don't know if something's come up um but obviously she was geared up for it because she was coming i can't believe and, it. we've and, been doing and, this and we've been doing this a year and that's the first time this has happened I'm, i yeah, I, yeah. I thought it would happen a lot more than what it actually did but you know these things happen but, these things but, happen. she's but, just gonna but, have us for the next half an hour right but do you, do you know what obviously if she um if she wants to come on at any point, she's more than welcome to. Because again, the film, um, um, the Black Mass, is absolutely a great, great, great film. We could talk a bit more, 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 more about it. We was going to wait. So, so this film currently is av- available on demand. Um, it, it, it centers around uh, a true event, a true crime case, which is quite shocking when you watch it. So, this is the directorial debut of uh uh devony pin um she is obviously a horror queen she's been in so many horror movies but now she's getting behind the camera um you wouldn't guess it to be fair because i think this is directed extremely extremely well with a lot of finesse um and when you you know consider the the gravitas of you know the whole thing of ted bundy because it's based mm-hmm. on Ted Bundy. But what I love about this film, I don't know about you, you Dan, but it is from the killer's perspective. Yes. You you are seeing from his perspective on potentially what he was feeling um, because obviously he killed over 30 people that we know of. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably more. But what I was quite, quite shocked at is because Ted Bundy, Ted Bundy, even though he killed all these people, actually got caught because he used to bite the victims 
Yes. And, and they matched the dental records to Ted. And that's how he got arrested and then Good Lord. ultimately executed. Good. On the, uh, the there's electrical a, chair. Um, I, I love the way this, this movie is filmed. Like you say, it's kind of shot over the over Ted Bundy's shoulder, essentially. And then it, it goes into his, his psyche and you know, he has kind of flashbacks and flash sideways or whatever you whatever you wanna however you wanna say it. But the I've got to talk about the it's not shot like a movie. Right, and and I know mm. that sounds ridiculous to to say, right? Because it's shot like it would have happened. You know, the the mm. way that the sound mix is so different to a normal mm. movie, and there's no there's no respite. There's no moment where you know it sets the character up, and then everything's going well, and then you have a drop, and then all of a sudden they come through in the end, and all and all that. It, it's just as it happened, and. As you're getting into it, and, it, and it's not a mega long movie. It's only about an hour and 10 minutes, isn't it? Or something like that. An right? hour and 22. And, yeah. And then as you're in it, as you're watching this movie unfold, it, do, it doesn't stop. There's, there's mm. no breakaway to go, here's a flashback of what it was like when he was a kid. It's, ju it's just as it happens and yeah. as it happens. And, and it's so, so different. And I like different. I like, you know, because like, for example, people always ask me about shows like The Last of Us, right? Mm. And... I didn't feel like it gave us anything new um, that hasn't been done on The Walking Dead. Th does that yeah. make sense? Uh, but yeah. this this movie, I thought, gave us something new that I've not seen before. <laughs> Do you know what I liked? Uh, you're talking about the sound mix. Um, mm. There is a scene when he's looking through the windows yeah. and at uh, the sorority house, and I love how the breathing effect, mm. like you can hear the breathing, and I watched this movie with headphones on. So it was even more immersive for me. What are you laughing at? Because I, 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 I know exactly what you mean. That, that made me go, shit, <laughs> yeah. there's something behind me. And, 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 and it made you feel more immersed in what was going on. Um, but the thing I liked about, about it is because it's based in the 70s. And it's really impressive how they got everything right for the 70s. Spot but I'm noticing quite a few of the outfits making a comeback now. So it's sort yeah, of yeah. retro coming back. But one bit that, that made me sort of chuckle a bit inside was the scene where, um, obviously I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but a woman finds another woman on, on the floor and she goes to the phone and she phones the police. And it's one of those old rotary phones. And for any, for any viewers and lis listeners that aren't in the, U the UK, so in America it's 911. So when mm -hmm. we had those rotary phones, it took us ages to call the bloody police <laughs> because it was nine nine nine. So you so so you had to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you'd be gone by the time you you called them. Um, but <laughs> I, love, I love that that was a takeaway for you. That's absolutely was. brilliant. Because because my dad used to always take the front of it off, so my sister couldn't make any phone calls. Brilliant. Um, but then she figured a way out of tapping the receiver in like Morse, Morse code and it worked and she actually phoned people. Sorry, sorry. Hang on. I Let's get back to Black Mass in just a second, but what? So on the old rotary phones, right, if you lift the receiver and you know the thing that, that it goes down onto that, that, that shuts the call off, if you press right. it like Morse code, so like one then five it will actually ring that number what true story yeah and, and yeah. your sister found this out pre-internet days just so she can phone a boy that she weren't supposed to be talking to yeah exactly exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, is, that um, is absolutely outstanding but Again, with Black Mass, I think that what they did was was quite respectful as well, because even though we saw it from um, the killer's perspective, what I liked about the mo movie, it didn't make the women come across as this helpless sort of, yes, you know, you know, stereotypical victim. Um, because I, I, again, my take my takeaway from it is that there were survivors. Yeah, you know, even though there was yeah, yeah. shock and and uh, you know. Rightly so, the pro they probably were affected for life. Um, but I felt like as if they were, you know, survi survivors. You know what? It, it is a good film. And again, they had a limited budget. And this is what I'm getting to now, where 
I'm actually preferring the indie movies over the studio yeah. mo movies because studios interfere too much, like yep. they are doing with Deadpool, uh, apparently. Yep. Um, and indie movies, they can make something that they want. Yeah, there's a there's a really there's a real sense of just somebody telling a story, and I'm I'm, I'm gutted Devani's not here because she it, she really it really comes across that she wanted to tell this story from his perspective without making the women look like the type of girls that are running up the stairs going oh my god I can't. like there's genuine terror in some of these attacks that happen that happen in this movie, and there's a really weird thing about Ted Bundy that's absolutely fascinated me right from first hearing about it was it. The Zac Efron movie, that was mm. Ted Bundy as well, wasn't yeah. it, right? I felt like that missed something. Like, you, you know, it was more about him and his relationship with his family rather than the actual murders themselves. You know, they kind mm. of cut a lot cut a lot out, didn't they? But with this one, there's a the, it goes into the celebrity status that Ted Bundy had because he was this dashing, good-looking fella yeah. that was absolutely wrong in the head. He had he had fans, and and right at the end of the movie, there's a montage of Ted Bundy going to court. There's a montage mm. of him arriving at court, but it, there's also clips in there of people cheering, like they they genuinely had him like but up on a pedestal. Cheering, but they were they cheering for him or cheering to the fact that he was actually going? Because I think that scene with the cheering was when he was going to the electric chair. No, but the, know, the, the, was... I, I I got the impression there was one woman that came over oh, all all. Yeah. Pearl clutchy that that you know he got, she got away from yeah. him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, from the Zac Efron um, film, um, they, mm -hmm. they 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 painted Ted the, as this charismatic sort of guy that would swoon all these wit all these women, but we didn't see that in Black Mass. We yeah. saw, and I suppose, A charming I think Black, man, charming. I think Black Mass right. was towards the end of his sort of reign. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. End, and yeah, yeah. Because obviously he went from uh, east to west, so 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 obviously this was based in Florida. Um, so obviously we saw the effect that it was having on Ted towards the end. Um, so I was quite surprised at the end when they said it was Ted Bundy because, you yeah. know, I always thought that he was this charismatic, really nice guy. Well, obviously not a really nice guy. He murdered people. But do you know what I mean? Like he came across yeah. as a... A guy next door but to look at him in real life he looks like he could be a neighbor and yeah yeah what, and he's got absolute movie out. star looks as well and he like that he's a good looking fella and he looks like a teacher do you know what i mean yeah they, they in the, in the trust, role mate. trust him yeah yeah so so lesson for everyone is just do not trust anyone because you I'll tell you know. what why don't we why don't we do the sponsor's message now and then we'll talk more about Zac Efron and Ironclaw. Caught up on that this week. Let's do that, shall we? Yeah, of course. So here we go with these sponsors. Oh, hmm. so yeah. So quick sponsor's message. Um, obviously, our sponsors, propstore.com is a great yep. place for you to get your screen-used props and costumes from your favourite movies and TV shows. They've got an auction coming up very, very soon, um, and they have some great auctions throughout the year. So if you fancy um, getting your loved one that perfect gift, I mean, what sort of movie are you into, uh, Dan? You're getting prepared, aren't you? That's what it is. I'm getting, dude, what's going I, 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 Early. I did it early. Um, what movies do I like? Yeah, I yeah. don't know. I Give me one movie. I thought you Oh, back to Give the future. Give me one movie. Back to the future. So yep. let's have a look. Um, so I'm just searching on here, propstore.com. Uh, if you've got facility to do that without coming off this stream, please do uh, visit their website. Uh, back to the future. I'm just going to look at, see what present I can get you, Dan. Um, for your birthday. When is your birthday, Dan? October. Hey, yeah. Do you know what? Interesting fact while you're Googling that, Brian. Uh, Back to the Future is set, the first one, on the 21st of October to the 26th of October. My brother's birthday is the 21st and mine's on the 26th. And uh, so, yeah. So when we did Back to the Future Day back in 2015, that was, uh, again, the same week. And, uh, yeah, uh, went to the cinema and watched the three movies back to back and uh, sweated an enormous amount of sweat because it was – have you ever been in a cinema for nine hours? It's it, it's yes. off. I used to work in a cinema. 
um, at Ooh. my younger years at Showcase Cinemas. Um, but um, uh, funny you talk about Back to the Future. Tomorrow I've, I'm getting delivered a 11 by 14 photo of Michael J. Fox signed uh, from nice. a recent sign-in. So, but um, yeah, all the items that prop stores got from Back to the Future is actually in their auction. So what we got? What go, we got? Oh, you've got everything from license plates to original artwork to his hoverboard to the paper um, of did the I see Brown Biff's committed. jacket there? Biff's jacket, yeah. You've got some hoverboards. Uh, you've got scripts. You've got the guitar. Uh, you've got the Pizza Hut thing. Uh, the little uh, yeah, yeah, the black and hydration. Decade. Yeah. So visit propstore.com if you want to buy anything from the buy now section. You can. Uh, you can use a code as well, which Dan loves. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, bro. Let's go, bro. Right? Brian 10. Brian 10 on propstore.com. Uh, put that in there. You get 10% off um, anything at the buy now section. So treat yourself. Treat someone else. Um, you know, they've got some great pieces that you can have on your wall in your man cave um, or for that loved one. Uh, because I've got to say, there's there's no better way to tell your loved one that you love them by getting them something from the <laughs> store. Do you like them? So, <laughs> Very well done. So, yeah. So, um, so yeah. Uh, Ted Bun- Bun- Bundy, I've got to say, um, you know, he, he just makes good content. And I don't mean him yeah, personally. Yeah. I mean the character that he is, you know, with these movies. Um, it's quite sad, though. I mean, I like true stories. So when something's true, and this is what we're talking about at the beginning in the way of our favourite movies, and I like the movies that are, uh, you know, religiously based and, and and um, you know, oh, we've got one from the Wednesday week, housewarming present for Dan. Um, yeah. You need Getting to get stitched up by my own socials here, aren't I? <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so, uh, yeah, so when they're loosely based on a true true story, uh, you don't know yeah. how much of it is actually real. It's like The Exorcist. Did you know that was based on a true story? Yeah, but I, 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 the, the pea soup vomit, I feel like, might have been no, one no. step too far. <laughs> Do you know <laughs> the, what? The they've rotating got, head. They've, they've, they've got a bit of creative license, I've got to say, with these mm-hmm. films. You know, when they say... Uh, based on i think it's yeah, very yeah. loosely based on um, yeah. because you know the exorcist it was based on a boy um i think in the 60s i think or 50s and 6 60s in georgetown in washington um that got exercised and right. obviously that was in a paper and that was read and that's where the story of the exorcist come from same a mega story it's the same with um what well, god what um amityville horror uh, the Ryan Reynolds version absolutely oh. terrified me. I think it came out what two thousand five, and yeah. then what it did was send me in an absolute wormhole of uh, reading about about these things. That, you know, did this happen? Did that happen? Did, did somebody with the reports of seeing this and like <laughs> pigs' heads with red eyes and stuff like that? Stuff that they didn't really put in that movie because it was more more a psychological thriller mm-hmm. than what they did with that film. But but that absolutely, I don't know why. I think that was the last movie that terrified me because i watched a grudge not long before that and i didn't really think much to that but but yeah i'm a civilian horror f me up do you know what uh on apple tv i think it is uh the haunting of enfield um mm-hmm. which what they've done i think we've spoken about it before but obviously as 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 it's a horror week for us um the great thing about that pro program what they've done they've taken original sound recordings and then mm-hmm. put actors to it sort of miming to them Oh, really? So what you're listening to is all the actual recordings of all these interviews and everything like, like like that. So my challenge to you, Dan, is to watch that, then walk away okay. and think, okay. do you know what? Do I believe or do I not? Because um, I'm tough not I, to crack. I believe it. It's the most documented paranormal event in the world. It has been... Um, like sort sort of witnessed by so many different characters from a news report to policemen to neighbors to you know loads of pe- people have have um experienced the paranormal activities in that house and i always wonder who's living in that house now can yeah you, can can you yeah, imagine yeah. Watch, watching the documentary and you're you're thinking that looks a bit like ours you know and then you realize <laughs> the address and you think 
Oh, bugger. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I'm, in, I'm in the death. I'm in the death murder house, and and I paid more for some reason for this. Like you know what Would I mean? Would you move like, out? What was that? Would you move out if you knew that say? Oh no, I'd start charging murder. entry. I'd, I'd, get, I'd get one of those light up signs outside going, "Hey, come on in here. This is this is the murder <laughs> house." Ten dollars. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd be I'd be all over that. I'd be, I mean, what was that one? The um, the movie with oh god, I'm, this is going to be the worst description. Uh, I, I want to say. It's it was on Netflix, and I'll say it was last year, where they had the interfering neighbours with the with the son that didn't speak, and there was a tunnel, and the kid kept going into their house, and uh, it's got uh, what's her face in it? Oh God, what's her face? Well, Sniffler's mom. Oh yeah, whose name escapes me right? Now. You know what? I knew I knew that from that uh, you know that that. Um, oh wow! Just then. Yeah, um, that, that... I, I don't know. I don't, I don't I don't I don't think I've watched it. <laughs> Have you not? She's uh, she's like a, an estate agent, and uh, her colleague's an estate agent, and her colleague and her fella buy buy a house, and they're mm. right involved in this in this neighbourly dispute, and uh, it's really quite psychological. I believe there was going to be a follow up to it, but I'm not. Um, I'm going to need to find out what project it is. So if you could vamp for me, Brian, for two minutes while I do some swift googling, that'd be great. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> oh, you mean me talk? Um, about, yeah. about, about, about well, some uh, some some great news um, from the entertainment world. I've got to say is that um, obviously James Gunn, that is making Superman Legacy, has decided to actually uh, go backwards and, and not call it Superman Legacy, but Legacy. Uh, no, just Superman. Uh, and mm-hmm. then also he, uh, you know, he released the picture of the emblem on the chest, which looks yeah, a with, bit with like corn sweat. Come. Gone sweat. He's there. He's there. I've just yeah. met. It's Jennifer Coolidge, by the way. That was the most frustrated bit of bit of television I'm, that. Uh, I'm, every... I'm, and what's the film? What's the film? Uh, it's a series. It's called The Watcher, and it's oh. about seven. Or, it's, it's like a mini series on on Netflix, and uh, it actually came out in 2022. I've just realised uh, you know how quick I'm chewing through the years, but it came out October 22, and uh, there there was meant to be a follow-up season to it and it went down really well uh but you know really good really psychological big fan of that big fan of that uh, yeah. so if you get get the opportunity to watch it go it's got uh, is it bobby cannavale is that his uh, name yeah yeah uh, yeah can- he's can- in it can- can- cannibal cannonvale yeah yeah he's in it it's, it's dope <laughs> I, I, know, it's, I know which one you're talking seven about. and a half but, fudge bars fudge bars yeah that's what we should do every week do like the fudge <laughs> fudge bar scale i'll get some pictures of some fudges people in america won't even know what fudges no. are so so no. they're missing out here they're missing out we're we're missing a trick we should just send people out fudge bars do you know what yeah. i mean so, uh for, so, for for them Let's get into it then. So, Iron Claw, you told me to watch last week. Yes, with Zac Efron uh, about the uh, the von von Eric uh, family. Um, what mm-hmm. what what mm-hmm. what did you think? What was your thoughts? So, well, first thing I noticed was the shape that Zac Efron's in. He still kept his Baywatch shape, and uh, yeah, again, I will I will <laughs> I will never stand next to that man, even if I had the opportunity to, because it's not good for my self esteem. Uh, he looks incredible in it, and with that nineteen seventies haircut that he's got. Does look he like man. a dark haired he man, yeah. Um, <laughs> but it tells a story of the von Erichs, a uh, a family surrounded by tragedy, uh, mm. with uh, a, a young a young uh, a young sibling being killed in uh, you know off screen. Then uh, you know there's suicides. There's uh, there's a angry dad who you know the pushy father. It's got everything. I, I and it's a great role for Zac Efron because obviously as he's moving forward and he's trying to get away from the high school musical vibe. And I think people now tend to forget that, you know, that it's a different, they, they, you know, they tend to forget that it's the same guy, if that makes sense. Cause you've kind of got teen, you know, teen heartthrob Zac Efron all of a sudden into, into man actor who's in his, you know, mid to late thirties now. Right. Mm. So and he and and he's starting to get these juicy roles like like the one that he did about Ted Bundy and then the and then this one here there's some there's some real I don't know some real challenging moments in it and I really quite enjoyed it and the the relationship with the father and the um, who's the actor from the uh, is it the bear oh that yeah plays the uh, plays the brother yeah who is it oh what's what's well, his name I'll Every let you Google that while I while, uh, while I'm talking about yeah. it but. 
but yes, there's um, some great performances in there, and it's a real sad story. And but you get, but there's also like pop culture references in there. So you get Ric Flair turn up, and you get um, you get actual wrestlers, and you know, being portrayed in the in in this movie, and it kind of scratches a, a an itch that you have as a because we were like what ten when all this was happening, mm. but. I really enjoyed it. Really got into it. Really, it's a good two hours long, and it's uh, it's eight and a half fudges for me. Right. So I'm just having having a look now. Uh, Jeremy Allen White. That's him. That's him. Really going to have a yeah. mega career going forward. This guy is well, going to be he's in everything. Won, Get like, used to seeing him for the beer, hasn't he? Um, mm-hmm. You know, in shows like, like 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 that. But if you like res- wrestling, there's a good series called Heels. Which mm-hmm. is done by Steve, Steve by Stephen Amell, um, and it's just great. It's really, really good. I think there's two se- seasons of that now. Um, but yeah, I mean horror. I mean, uh, you mentioned Dan er- earlier on from bleedingmarvelous uh, dot com. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Check check her out um, and her company because they deal with some great. They sell some awesome horror. Well, it's all horror stuff, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And and yeah, you know yeah. what? They attend every single like convention they work so hard for for this company uh so check them out bleeding Mar- marvelous um and it's bleeding spelt b-l-e-a-d-i-n-g yeah yeah um but they're on face facebook and instagram um but if you're a horror fiend um and you want to get your horror fix with uh, buying some great products um bleeding marvelous is the place to go um but yeah, I mean, um, obviously, uh, you know, we're talking about horror. I mean, I'm just thinking to myself now, uh, what can we? I mean, if anyone is watching that wants to um, say anything around horror movies, uh, favorite actors, um, you know, the worst horror movie you've seen. I mean, have you got a worst one? God, there's loads. I didn't like any of them. I think there was a period where horror kind of died around 2004, didn't it? Like it just kind of just Actually, fell off the face. Do you of the remember earth. a film back in the? Um, it came out in the, in the early 90s because when I when I was a kid, it, they, they weren't really strict on what videos you could rent out. You know, like when you've got no. an 18. So I used to go to Raj's, which was um, a, a shop up the road, and 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 my 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 dad was really good friends with Raj. And as long as the films didn't have like loads of sex in it, I could yeah. rent it out. Obviously, right. ob- obviously, you didn't realize that a lot of horror has got a lot of sex in it. Um, kind of goes hand in hand, doesn't yeah. it? A lot of it. But I, I rented a film called Demons. I don't know mm-hmm. if you remember that film. But I remember the, most... the cover of it. It was always one of those I used to see in the video shop going, that looks mint. What's that? Yeah. It's the most screwed up film I've ever watched in my whole life. I mean, the makeup in it and. You know the, the the work that's gone into it is amazing. Maybe I need to watch it again because I never watched it again. I watched it as as a kid, and I've got to say that my thought on movies that when I watched when I was a kid might be different now because I know that the world isn't full of butterflies, rainbows, and cupcakes. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, uh, I, 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 there's there's two that I want to watch. Yeah, Thirteen Ghosts and the Haunting. I've never got around to seeing them because <gasps> Thirteen I, Ghosts. I, I know I should. Oh my Thirteen God. Ghosts is really good. That is an awesome. Uh, Matthew, um, is it Lillard? L- yeah, yeah, L- Matthew Lillard. Matthew Lillard. Yeah, yeah. Shaggy. Amazing in it. Absolutely amazing. And he's going back to play Shaggy again. Yeah. Yeah, apparently yeah. so. Yeah. Oh, Julia's but, a big fan of Thirteen Ghosts as well. Look, but she, but, thir- uh... but Thirteen Ghosts is being made made into a series. So is it? Um, yeah, it's being made into a series. So you've got to go and 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 check it out. I just like the whole concept of the film. Um, I think it's very well made. And what was the other one that you haven't seen? The Haunting. Never got round to it. Just never got round to it because I, I like to say Jones, uh, Liam Neeson. I think it's Liam. Wait, Neeson, it's got it? Catherine Zeta Jones in it, and I've not watched it. What? Kind yeah, of fucking... yeah, yeah. Catherine Zeta Jones, um, but it's 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 a great great film. Ab- absolutely great great film. Again, really really good story storyline. Um, it's a lot better than Haunted Mansion, <laughs> even though they've made two of those, and both of those I haven't thought there was any but, good. You were talking. You were talking about horror movies that that are trash that I did. Mm. I didn't enjoy. I'm gonna. I'm gonna annoy some people now. They're listening to it now. I really hated 
Jeepers Creepers. I honestly, you know, like, you know, there's a point in a movie where you go, ah, and it's ruined oh. it. Like, like, for example, I'll give you an example with Hancock. As soon as Charlize Theron throws him through that fridge, the movie yeah. falls to shit, right? It just absolutely yeah. dies. And it, yeah, and it's the same with, um, with Jeepers Creepers. It's terrifying. And then it turns out it's a banshee. And you're like, oh, well, <laughs> it, it, it gets in your head and you're like, oh, God, there's some genuine terror. And it turns out it's a banshee that's got a cave. Do you know what? I and then actually, they made a second one. Well, the first one with anything is always the best, I've got to say. Um, but John, mm-hmm. John, Jonathan Breck that plays the banshee, as you say, um, mm-hmm. I, I think his character is the creeper. That's how he's referred to at the film. Oh, is that, is that what um, they call it? Yep. Yeah. I think the makeup in it is fantastic. I think the whole thing, remember when it came out, you know, again, it was ama- ama- amazing. Looking back now, obviously, we've been spoiled with all these amazing movies. Um, mm-hmm. I quite like it. Yeah, the, oh, the, the two, three, four, and I think they're up to fifth one now. I think. Uh, there's that many. There's yeah. that many. I, t- I, tell you, I tell you where it is as well. Yeah, you I know, think, one, think, one movie think... that everybody likes that's a horror film, Evil Dead 2. What the fuck is that? That is shit. That is shit. What <laughs> drugs What drugs are they on with that film? And it's like this, this cult classic, and he's going, groovy. And you're like, yeah, all right, brilliant. But this oh. movie's absolute oh, trash. Oh, you're going to get... Um, so, so if anyone disagrees with Dan... Um, you know, is 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 bring <laughs> it, bring it is, on. Is at Dan Fudge. Is it at Dan Fudge? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, <laughs> Everything's tell, at tell, Dan tell, tell, tell him how you feel. Uh, tag uh, Sam Raimi and 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 Bruce in on it. Um, you know, by all means. I mean, the thing is, there are certain franchises that you don't mess with. I think Evil Dead is probably one of those. But saying that, have you seen the most recent one? No, I, I I'm not watching any more of them. I'm not. I I, I went into. So you had Evil Dead and then Evil Dead 2, which was a remake, not a sequel, right? Uh, which was weird that it was called Evil Dead 2. And then he gets sucked into the, the netherworld or, or something, and, you know, he get at the end of that one, and now he's yep. like a god in some bloody swashbuckling empire. I'm absolutely not interested. Not interested in it. Well, do you know what? Next, next week, um, I'm going to ask you about Evil Dead Rise. Evil Dead Rise is the most recent film. Watch it, right? Is that has it got really a different good. tone? Because we're talking, yeah. we're talking about horror movies, right? And you look, and the best example I can give you of the recent change in tone. You know, we t- we talk a lot about Halo on the show because that's what mm. we're watching right now. There's a shift in tone between season one and season two. Stranger Things, season what, seasons one to three, ended with mm. eleven with a arm out in the air with blood coming down from a nose and pushing the the schminkle flunk back into uh, a rift in the in the oh, whatever crazy name they've given it that and it, it kind of that format kind of died a little bit you're like yeah we get it she's going to go ah and then they go oh, the blood and then the and then the the, 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 the trinkle poof will go back into the upside down and, and stay there and then it might come back again bloody hell but the most recent season had a massive shift in tone mm. and and I wonder how and and that op- that scene where you know the guy with the long hair takes takes the girl back to the caravan, and she starts folding in the air, and her limbs start breaking. You're like Jesus, what is what happened here? This is a completely straight, different straight show. Straight at the start, yeah, straight at the mm. start. And you think, geez, the setting setting the tone right there. Again, though, I I I think that series, uh, that's yes, yeah, uh, season of Stranger Things. Jo- Joseph Quinn made it for me. Yeah. I thought he, yeah. he 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 was amazing in it, but yeah, Evil Dead Rise literally has got a different tone. What you know, complete completely. Um, great actors in it. Um, I think I've got one of the actors here, uh, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Which is Elisa, Alicia, uh, Elisa. Oh, I'm rubbish with names. You know that, Alyssa. Dan. No, Elisa, <laughs> Elisa Sutherland. Um, right, and she's absolutely amazing in it. Absolutely ama- ama- amazing. Watch it. It's just amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously we're going to try and get Devaney on, onto the show, um, you know, at a time that suits, suits, suits her because I, I want to mm-hmm. get her on. I want to talk to talk about black, black mass. Um, so everyone watching, please hit, hit subscribe. We've got some great guests 
coming up and it does really help the show by subscribing and liking the video um you know obviously you know if you've got any suggestions for guests that you'd like to come on hopefully we can get them on um but yeah hit 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 subscribe like the video and comment uh we love you all thank you for supporting us um i really enjoy doing what i what i do um i don't know about you dan uh, you just turn up. I think I it's like, just that I, therapy I, yeah, session. Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> kind of just turn up and just whinge on about things. But I kind of like these ones where it's just you and me, Brian, sometimes. Because I feel like it, get, it lets the viewers kind of learn who we are as characters a little bit. Because obviously when there's a guest there, you know, they're the star of the show. You want to hear about the guest. They don't want to hear about a geezer from Rotherham talking about how much you didn't like this thing that everybody else liked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? It is what it is. It is what it is. Right. Uh, we're going to get going. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Um, yeah, hit hit subscribe. We'll see you next week. Um, uh, we've got an interview releasing on Sunday with Charles Martin Smith from The Untouchables, um, American Graffiti, and is in a new film called This Time that's doing the uh, festival circuit, which is a, an amazing film, um, which um, we will be covering that once it gets released. But thank you so much and uh, keep safe. And I've got to find the button to say goodbye. So goodbye. Look after yourselves. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.